Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In this one we are going to talk about how we would have locations related to each other by which I mean if you for example you were in a shopping mall you could have a list of all of the accessible locations within the shopping mall which is separate from the map so for example in the map you would have a number of places like the shopping mall, the theater, your home and then when you visit one of those locations you have access to the rooms within that location before i get too busy i'm gonna say uh, thank you to everybody who subscribed it's really overwhelming how much support this channel has got since it started um since we started doing the rampai tutorials it means a great deal to me honestly thanks very much if you haven't already done it feel free to jump over there and hit the subscribe button Maybe hit the bell icon if you want to get notified when I upload a new video. And of course, give me a thumbs up on this video and let me know what you think in the comments below. And feel free to request any future topics if you have anything you'd like me to do. Obviously, a huge shout out to all of my supporters on Subscribestar. I don't do this for the money, but the fact that people are willing to put their hand in their pockets and bung a couple of quid my way for doing this and writing the games that I write again it means a great deal to me so thanks very much building on what we've already started we've already got a class called place and that already has some properties and things like that in it but what we want to do is we want to adjust that class and add another one to be able to do that now this guy already has x and y coordinates for the map so all we're going to do to this class is we're going to add a property called id and we're going to put in self dot id equals id like so and then what we're going to do as well is i'm going to add a space in here because i normally have spaces between my decorators for some reason i didn't do it in the last video and i'm going to add a, another property but i'm not going to do that right now because we want to do this in a logical order so what we need to do now is we need to create a new class so we're going to do that here and we're going to call this sub place and that also inherits from object and we need to do define the init and obviously it has to have self first now the first thing that we want to give this is an ID of its own and then we want to give it a parent uh, after we've given it a parent we also need to give it a name and then we need to give it an is active flag as well now this one doesn't need x and y coordinates because it's not going to appear on the map screen all we need to do is tell python or renpy that when we are in the main place the sub places the sub locations the rooms within this place will be accessible and obviously you can have locked rooms that aren't active, that aren't visible. So you could like, for example, exploring a dungeon and you want certain rooms to remain un invisible until they get to another level or something you could do. Set the is active flag to false. But by default, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set them all to true so that we can see them when we need to. So what we need to do is we need to say self.id equals id self parent let's do that spell it correctly equals parent self dot name equals name self dot is active equals is active making sure that we are case sensitive like so so what locations do we currently have so we need to adjust all of these current places to give them an ID number. So we're just gonna simply call the first one zero, then one, then two, and then three. Remembering that when we're working in any computer code scenario, zero is always the first number and not one. So that, cause then if we want to create a list of these, um, like we have here then obviously we need to put zero one two three so it's that simple so um, this will all make sense very shortly when we get a little bit further into it so let's say we want to create a couple of rooms in our home so what we need to do 
is oh, we need to in create some instances of our object first so we've got sub place so we need to do a, a new list called sub locations or sub location uh, we'll call it sub locations just for the sake of being vaguely more grammatically correct and now we need to create the default so we're going to locations good lord my spelling is pretty bad today dot append so we need to call a sub place and what properties do we put in so we have an id now this one's going to be t oh wow nearly hey nearly we need to forgot to put the t in the sub in the places as well so in places we need to put t which is going to be our id or our index number and then we've done it as well in the sub locations one as well and what's next parent so that's just going to be uh, minus one by default and the reason we're going to call it minus one is that in our list of main locations, none of those are ever going to be minus one because you can't have a list index of minus one. So what we can do later on is we can check to see if the, there is a minus one in this property. And if it is, it means that this location is actually a default and it doesn't because otherwise all locations would default to being part of the home family which we obviously don't want so we've got minus one and what's next a name so we're just going to call that a blank string and then we're going to set them by default to false for is active i appreciate that i've gone quite quickly through this so i'm going to talk you through it just one more time to make sure that we're all clear on what's happened we've added an id or an index number to our place class so that we can give it a numerical value. We've then created a second class called a sub place or a sub location, which also has an ID number. It has a parent property, a name and an is active flag. This class doesn't need an X and Y coordinate because it's never going to appear on the map. So now that we've created that, we've added uh, that to a list as well, and then we've created a default value for each member of those lists and we've obviously added the index to our places list in the defaults and then all of the places that we have already instantiated so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of sub locations so we're going to call this sub locations spelling it correctly zero equals sub place so this is where we're going to give it the values that are actually going to make some sense so first things first it's zero so we give it an id of zero now we need to give it a parent and it's going to be a room in home so the parent is also going to be zero because home is index zero now we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this one the bathroom. And of course, we need to always be able to get into the bathroom in case we need to do something. So I'm going to create four copies of that. And then obviously we need to change these numbers so that they appear correctly in the list. And they're all going to be um, parented to home. So we don't need to change the second number. So our ID numbers match the number in the list. They're all parented to zero. And we're gonna call this one the bedroom. And we're going to call this one the kitchen. And we're gonna call this one Thunderwan's playroom. And you can interpret that however you wish. So in terms of the classes themselves, we have pretty much finished what we need to do here. What I am going to do though, is I'm actually gonna create a new property in the place class. And I'm gonna give it a property decorator, as soon as I remember how to spell property. And I'm gonna call this one def, and we're gonna call this one subs. And now I'm gonna call it rooms actually, just to make life easier, so that it's a little bit more understandable and 
itself. And all we're going to do is we're going to go in a loop through our sublocations. So for Q in sub locations, and we're going to say if Q dot parent equals self dot ID. And we're going to, or we need to actually create a new variable here. And this is going to be our out list. And that's just going to be an empty list. And we're going to say uh, if the sublocations parent is the same as the ID number. So, in other words, we're saying is this sublocation part of our little family that we're currently looking at? And uh, if it's true, then we're going to say out list dot append q dot id uh, yeah and that's all we need to do and then we can just say return out list like that and that will return a list of rooms so if we ever do need to just see a list and we don't want to faff around we can just say uh, give me the place dot rooms and it will just get, return a list of all of the rooms within that particular location so in the case of home if we were to do in fact you know what let's just do it let's just do it so here we are if we say shift o we're going to say uh, print places zero dot rooms so you can see it's now given us a list of room ID numbers which are sublocated to that room so if we were to come back out of here let's change our location so we're gonna to go to our map we're gonna to go to the shop so all of that stuff still works and um, this is part of the sort of the make and break just checking that those values don't change when we move to another room no so if I were to change that to one as you can see, it doesn't contain any sub locations in place one or two or three. So we know that so far, everything is working as intended. So all the information that we need is there. If you wanted to pass this information in from an XML file, you could obviously create a vast list of locations and sub locations. But at the moment, all the information we need is there. We've got our place class and we've got our sub locations class so now all we need to do is figure out a way of putting that information on the screen now what we want to do is we're going to create a new screen so I'm actually going to create a new RenPy document so what I want to do is go into our scripts I'm going to create a new file and we're going to call this one uh, let's just call this sub lock dot rpy like so we're going to create a new screen and we're going to call this one our sub block hud like so so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a frame and we're going to have this just located in the top left hand side of the screen at the moment so x align 0.0, .0 y align 0, 0.0 like so and in there we're going to create a vbox like so and then we're going to say for q in uh, sub locations and all we're going to do is we're going to run through our list of sub locations so what we need to do is come into our script.rpy and find out We've got our open map and we've got location equals blah, 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 blah. So what we need to do is we need to f set a variable in our map screen, which sets a index number so that we know what the index of our current location is. <laughs> I'm not sure I did a very good job of um, explaining that, but bear with me for a moment and we'll go through it. So in our map screen, currently we are returning a, a name like so 
all we're doing is we're sending a string back to the scripts to RPY, which changes our location. What we want to also do is set an index variable. So each location now has an ID number. What we want to do is set a variable to that number. So we're going to go into our script.rpy again and at the very top we're going to create a default and we're going to call this one location id and we're going to set it as minus one uh, no actually we'll set it as zero because we now know that our default location is home which is id zero so in our map screen what we want to do is we want to add a comma to action and we want to set variable and we're going to set the variable at location id and we're going to give it the variable the, the value of q dot id and we're going to copy that bit and we're going to paste that there and we're going to save that now that should all be all right we may have to put that in quotations but we'll find that out very shortly so we're going to come back to our our value here so now we have an id number so we're going through all of our sub locations and we're going to say if q dot parent equals location id and if it is then we're going to input some text and it's just going to say q dot name like so and that's really all we need to do right now I'm going to go back to our map screen and if you're using atom you can just select the variable and then type in one quotation that should run no nope. Ah, we have to put this in front of here like that because it's a return statement so I believe that's what we need to do which we'll is copy and paste that bit and delete that yeah that's what it is because it's a return statement we have to put anything that we want it to also do prior to that so we're there marvelous now let's just see if we can do a show screen uh christ what was that screen called again <laughs> sub lock so we need to call sub lock hud so as you can see it's there it's obscured by the other one so we can change the positional information and we can add it to our interface we just wanted to check that it actually worked which it does so we're going to quit out of this now we can change the x pos i'm quite happy with we're going to change this to y position and we're going to give it like 150 pixels should be fine and then we're going to copy that and where we go into our screens.rpy so in our say screen we're going to add a statement that says use sublock hud and hopefully assuming that we haven't made a complete balls up we should now see that whenever there's text to be seen we will see the sub locations like so now what we could do is we could turn these into um, text buttons that would allow us to actually change the sub location um, which we can do but we'll do that in the next video so hopefully you've been able to follow all of these steps yeah let me know what you think in the comments below I look forward to hearing your comments and if you've got any questions feel free to fire them at me and I look forward to seeing all of those so see you in the next video thanks very much bye bye